Welcome to Coffee and Cash Flow. In this series, we sit down for coffee with real estate investors who are working towards financial freedom, one income property at a time. If you are a real estate investor or aspiring to become a real estate investor, this show is for you. Welcome to the show today. I have Jimmy Murray here today. He's going to go into what it takes to be a uh, real estate millionaire. So we're going to go over three different steps that he took to become a real estate millionaire himself. So I know this is a big topic. It's a big question. So we actually pulled in a real real estate millionaire into okay. the show today. And uh, I've known Jimmy since almost since he started real estate. And I saw him kind of build this thing up from almost the start. I, I'd say a three year gap. I met you in 2015. You started in 2012. Yeah. yeah. So um, he's got some really good knowledge to drop on you. And if your goal is to you know make millions in real estate, we're going to drop some good knowledge on you. So hopefully you can take some nuggets and apply it to your own real estate business. So Jimmy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Sorry, I got stuck in my own head because I'm thinking about like, how do I break this down into the three steps? Because it's a little bit more than that, but I, I think I got it. It's a lot think, more than that, but just condense it, you know? I got That's it. That's awesome. I got it. So honestly, step one, I go back to like my top book for years was The Richest Man of Babylon. So wow, okay. I would always recommend that people read The Richest Man of Babylon. And if you're listening, go buy it. You can literally read it in seven days, 20 pages a day, seven days, you're done. Step one, you have to be good at saving money. I like it. So fundamental rule of finance is pay yourself first. So when you get that paycheck, take 10%, pay yourself first, and that's going to become your investment fund. Step one, be a good saver. Step two, take action. So I can remember like when the bigger pocket, I think bigger pockets has like three or four podcasts right now. Like they do, yeah. It's now I can say I'm, I'm old school. Yeah. Like I know when there was one, and it was Josh Dorkin and Brandon Turner, right? Like out there just spitting. So step two, take action. I can't remember who it was in the podcast that I listened to, but they had that like um, the fire round at the end. Oh yeah, I remember that, yep. And the guy yeah. said, massive actions equal massive results. And that's a God's honest truth. I like that. So on another video we talked about joining your local RIA. I can't tell you, uh, I'll try to keep this PC. I was gonna go a little hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> so many people go to their local RIA and they just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and they don't take action. No action. And that's why I've kind of been able to clean up and have a high level of success in local RIA because if I show interest, I'm gonna take action. Like there's one gentleman who literally, he charges $10,000 a year for coaching and you get one hour every other week. He gives one free hour at the local RIA every single month. So I would wow. just sit there and wait for a golden nugget and then go home and take action based off of that golden nugget. That's awesome. So you have somebody that charges wow. $10,000 a year to coach and he's there giving a free hour every month, like jump on that and that then take huge. action from it. Step one is save. Step two, take action. And step three, hold yourself accountable. Be real. Right? Know what you're not good at, know where you can get better, and know where you have to get better, right? I think a lot of people just are not good at looking in the mirror. They're, they look at other people and they're like, oh shit, I'm not, I'm not up with Chris, right? Honestly, the name of the game, I call it, uh, you play N64 as a kid? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. yep. So in, I call it ghost mode. So in Nintendo 64, it was, I used to play Mario Kart as a kid. So racing go-karts, right? And in Mario Kart, they used to have this thing called ghost mode. So you would race a lap and then you would have to race yourself. Right? Okay. So yeah. I remember that. Yeah. As a part of accountability, the only person that you're racing against is yourself. Yes. Your goal every day should be to become a better version of yourself. I love that. So if we have to recap, step one is learn how to save. So then you can invest. Um, step two is to take action. And then step three is to be accountable. Hold yourself accountable and work diligently to consistently become a better version of yourself. I like that. That's huge. Now, in your personal experience, did you go? How did you get there? Did you get there more fixed and flip, um, wholesaling, uh, buy and hold real estate? What, what, what do you think is the best and uh, most realistic approach? Oh, single hands down best approach to building wealth and building your portfolio is the Burr strategy. I love it. Yep. So okay. that's not that's not because Gucci Man has a you know, ice cream <laughs> cone that says burr on his cheek, right? The burr strategy is buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. And the goal yes. of the burr strategy, I had a client in my office this morning and they were like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know that it was actually an acronym. I hear you say it all the time. Um, but the burr strategy, the name of the game is to buy a distressed asset, stabilize it. And then hopefully when you go to refinance at the end of the day, you now have a cash flowing asset that you have zero dollars of your own money to. 
That is absolutely the name of the game. They're tougher to come by nowadays, but it's still readily achievable in most markets. That is awesome. So it's almost a hybrid between the fix and flip and the buy and hold. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's right? the perfect hybrid. So absolutely. You're, you're getting that long-term wealth build, but you're also getting that forced appreciation. Yep. But you're just holding on to the equity rather than cashing out and going and do it again. Yeah, in um, one so. way um, that some folks are familiar with as well is the chunker strategy, or the chunker method as it's called, right? So. Uh, anybody who plays golf, I try to play golf. I'm a former baseball player, right? Retired baseball player, but now like playing golf and I still kind of suck, to be honest. <laughs> but um, in golf, they talk about driving for show and putting for dough, right? Okay. Like driving's really flashy and you, mm -hmm. you get up there and you rip a 300 yard drive, like that's sexy, right? But where you really make your money is hitting one putts on the green, right? That's where you really make your money. So it's the same thing in real estate. The chunker method is you flip for dough, and then you buy and hold for dough, that monthly residual income. So when you flip and you have that large chunk of money, chunker method, you roll it into that next buy and hold, hopefully with the 1031 exchange. And then it's tax advantage and earning you income residually every single month. I like that. That's huge. That's really good. Really good piece of knowledge. So, um, okay. So if you have questions about that, drop it in the comment section below. Hopefully you get a lot of value from it. For more real estate content, Hit, hit the uh, like button and subscribe for more real estate videos coming your way. So thanks so much for watching and have an awesome day.